Nerd School is a member of the Queen City Podcast Network, powered by Ortho Carolina. Now offering video visits so you can take control of your orthopedic care from the comfort of your home. Schedule online at orthocarolina.com. Ortho Carolina, you improve. Hey, fellows. It's the first <laughs> night of vlogging of the season. Nerd School. Oh, Lord, have to mercy. <laughs> Hey, I am a super nerd. Oh, my glasses are broken. I am a uh, super nerd. My pocket is protected. <laughs> I am a super nerd. Excelsior. 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 Nerd. The Nerd School Podcast, nerd. starring Andy. My name is Andy. I am a super, super, uh, I'm a former um, entertainment journalist. TBJ. Hi, this is Tiffany. You may hear me be referred to as TBJ. TBJ, y'all. I am what I like to call a surprise nerd. Art Star. My name is Art Star. AKA Art Star. He's the nerd Gotham City deserves. And yours (laughs) truly, call me Joe. Wow. Yeah. I didn't get it as bad as she did. Because he would be dead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yes. so Captain America. Okay, Captain. The truth. <laughs> Welcome to the Captain America episode. But he, he yeah. might end up, you know, happening upon that thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he might he listen might. to it. He can happen upon it all he wants to. But- <laughs> uh, listen, he did his own dirt, and if he hears it live, welcome, congratulations, you did dirt. Ta-da. I got no shame. All my exes can tune in. We can have oh, an episode man. where I compare them to all the Marvel villains. We can do that on a Patreon episode. Rank <laughs> Tiffany's exes by Marvel villains. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yes. This is the best episode of Nerd School ever and so I'm far. You, and we've just begun. Buy, all, of, all of that energy she just gave off. Yeah. He would be lining up to pay for that. Get behind that paywall. That's like, right. We got to hear it. They got to hear. Hear what we Tiffany says about it. her exes. Yeah. I will. Hey, I'm the single girl in the group. You, uh, <laughs> Joe and Andy, y'all are married. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. Art's living his best life. I don't know what Art does. Uh, so, gotta bring the <laughs> in. what Art does behind closed doors, only Art knows. I know. Only so Art says. I, I I don't mind spilling tea. One day, future future. I was gonna say readers. There's no readers. Future readers. Tune into <laughs> Patreon one day. Uh, <laughs> tells all. All right, into Captain okay. America: The First Avenger from 2011. Let's go. Directed directed by Joe Johnston. Is that a big deal? Uh, yes, that... I believe he was. He was also uh, the director of uh, the Rocketeer. Uh, I believe. Oh. Let me double check. Now, is that a comic book too? Is that a comic book? It was a comic book. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was uh, kind of took place in the same time period too, and it, and it's yeah. He did uh, the Rocketeer. He did Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Huh. Uh, Jumanji. <laughs> Uh, Jurassic Park three, okay, um, uh, yeah, and uh, he, huh. uh, yeah, the Rocketeer is kind of one of those uh, forgotten gems of an old. Uh, it, it captured the like the old style of storytelling really well. It's about a guy who has a jetpack and fights crime. What year did and, that come uh, out? Do you have that handy? Oh, I did. Early nineties. Uh, yeah, I think it was early to mid. I feel like I was in uh, high school. Ninety one, yeah, nineteen ninety one. Ninety one, yeah. That, isn't that um? Wow, is that's that Encin- old. That's not Encino Man, is it? Uh, the Rocketeer is not Encino Man. No. <laughs> <laughs> who's the, who's I the actor? Think he means who's the, the actor playing Rocketeer? I hope uh, the Billy same. Campbell. I don't know why uh, I thought it oh, was. Oh, you were asking if man. the actor was Encino Man. Yeah, I was. I know he was not Encino. It was not Pauly Shore. Not Pauly Shore. We're not. And he was like, no, sure wasn't it? The Rocketeer. Part you mean Brendan Fraser? Man. You Brendan thought it was Brendan Fraser? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, it was a guy named Billy Campbell. Uh, and Jennifer Connelly was also in it. Uh, oh, Jennifer Rocket. Connelly. And was, I think Timothy man, her Dalton was, was the villain. Uh, she did like but, uh, career opportunities, Rocket Man, and then the Hulk. And Rocketeer. Then oh, Rocketeer, whatever. Yeah, yeah uh, Rocketeer was, is, uh, was a kind of a beloved that, comic at the time. But, by a guy named Dave Stevens, who uh, I think he uh, he actually died young, so he didn't get to do a whole lot of the Rocketeer. But uh, this oh. was uh, one of his things. So they kind of tapped him because he knows comic books and he knows that era. 
Yeah. So he okay. uh, he was a pretty good choice for Captain America: The First Avenger. And people were happy with that nerd in nerd world with him as yeah, the director. Yeah, I think so. I think people were pretty pretty good with that. I don't remember any backlash. Yeah, and people like this movie generally, right? Like. Yeah, I believe so. It's it forms the it, what it did. Uh, I don't know how do you want to do this. Do you want to go chronologically through the movie, or do you want me to just say some spill some stuff about it? I mean, I have notes like from the beginning to the end, like we usually do. But I don't care sure. what you what. I mean, you can always tiptoe in and then come back or yeah. whatever. But um, I I, th- I think this was a good way because this was like Thor in a way that how are you going to take a character as generally kind of dorky seeming as Captain yeah. America. Yeah. He's he's the guy who dresses in the stars and stripes. Yeah. And all he's got two little weird that. wings on his head. Yeah, the wings. And a big old the, A. Yeah, I've always wondered, like, what big is that? Flary Why is he boots? wearing that thing on his head? Like, I think that was, and I think I, I kind of alluded to that in some of the early, earlier ones. It's like, I couldn't fathom what how they could do this, like the story and yeah, that, his just dumb like Thor, mask, I, I the no, stupid wings, yeah. like just like Thor, yeah, like did, like how can they possibly even do that and make it believable? Like who would wear that dumb A on his head? And I gotta say, when we get into it, like they found the only way I think you could do it, like yeah, <laughs> and yeah. It they, was they like, every found... time I saw it, I was like, yeah, I guess that's how you would do it. Okay, that makes sense. With the wings yep. on the head and the making it the commercialized thing, and I mean, mm. leave it to the leave it to the movie makers. Yeah, you know? like he was created for propaganda by Joe Simon and, and uh, yeah. uh, Jack Kirby back in 1941. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is first published in Captain America comics number one? Yeah, when Marvel was still timely comics. Oh wow! Uh, you said 40, 41? 41. Yeah. This is, but I think, That's before it. we propaganda. even entered the war. It's propaganda, is what it is. Yeah. And he's punching Hitler on the cover. Yeah. Of the right. first issue. <laughs> and this is this is before we were in the war, I think. It was during the run up. Yeah. So this was like, uh, if, I don't know, um, like imagine like a comic book where like a world leader now gets yeah. punched in the face. Um, you know, it's Hitler. Like, he's like, technically he's the worst guy ever. But like Putin or back something. Back then, Trump. this was before we knew about uh, you know the concentration cool. camps or anything. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, but but you know, uh, Joe Simon and Jack Kirby, I believe, were both. Uh, uh, I wanna, I'm pretty sure they're both Jewish, so they they were really big on let's punch Hitler in the face, yeah. which plays into the joke during the Star Spangled Man with the Plan era, where he punches Adolf Hitler in the face every show. Yeah, right. The, and they even said great, that line. Yeah. It was a line like, what are you qualified? Well, I've, I've knocked Hitler out in 35 cities or whatever it was. You know, like... Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, that was absolutely... Like, that kind of had to be in there somehow, and they found the perfect way to include punching Hitler in the face without actually punching Hitler in the face. And not being cheesy. Not and, uh, but he's cheesy. Yeah. Line. Well, it's funny you say that, because yeah. it's like this, this, this started as propaganda... And then they portrayed that propaganda bit in there as how he originated, kind of mm-hmm. too. Like that's kind of clever when you think about like how that. I mean, now that you're telling me that's the kind of history, which I guess I knew, mm-hmm. but I and they actually have the cover, I think, of the original Captain America comics number one in the movie somewhere. Like there's kids running around with that actual comic book. Oh yeah, which yeah. is uh, pretty fun and uh, huh. Um, Huh. Bucky, Bucky Barnes is in that first issue as well mm-hmm. as the the he's the mascot of the regiment. He's like a teenage kid. He's like a little like I don't know. He's maybe twelve or something. He's like Robin, the boy wonder to Captain yep. America's mm-hmm. uh, Batman. And oh. so he's and he ha- he the only reason he becomes a superhero is because he accidentally stumbles into Captain America's tent while he's changing into Captain America and finds out his secret identity. Uh, <laughs> And ah. said, "All right, well, to, to help keep your secret, you're gonna be uh, you're gonna be my partner now." And they go, they fight Nazis together, and he's got the little Bucky outfit, and his name was Bucky. He didn't have a cool superhero name; he was just Bucky. <laughs> and uh, just Bucky. Yep, it's Bucky. Captain America and Bucky. And seems very uh, timely for the time when introducing a superhero. Right. It's very um, what do you call it? Well, who's the moose with his friend? 
Bob Winkle Jamers. Yeah. Yep. Very much cool. like main character and friend. <laughs> Bud Bunny Although, and friend. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's what writers did for a long time. Mm. You couldn't have a main character without a snazzy Gotta have side a sidekick. Kick. Yep. A little that's sassy, right. snazzy, some, something to give them a little tip cat. <laughs> yep. And uh, like a little way to identify with the kids, like it gave us like yes. you know the kids were the target audience for comic books a lot of the time, so mm-hmm. or most you of the time, too so can be a hero. Just like That's a right, <laughs> especially in propaganda. Join the war effort, everybody. Join the war effort. Yeah. And, uh, so or get involved in this. And get, get excited. And realize these guys are jerks. Um, all right, I'm back. So, all right. So I love. Um, you. You, to keep your secret, you're gonna be is what I, I last heard. You're like Bucky, only became a superhero because he caught Captain America getting in his thing. Yeah, he caught uh, Captain America was known as ooh, who's the the super soldier that's yeah. uh, helping us all take down the the, the Nazi threat. And um, Bucky's like, I I would like to meet Captain America. I'd love to be just like him. And Steve Rogers is like, maybe you will someday. And then he, then Steve Rogers changing into Captain America because it was a secret identity at the time. Yeah. And then Bucky joins and, and he goes, well, uh, now that you're the only one that knows my secret, you can be my partner. Let's all fight Nazis together. And he, yeah, gives, he, him, he gives him a super serum? No, oh. Bucky doesn't have any of that. Oh, okay. Bucky's just a kid who's a good fighter uh, dressed like a... But a 12-year-old? Like He's partner. like a child? Uh, you know, what yeah. we were saying while you were gone is, yeah. you know, it's the old school. Every main character had a sidekick, and they tended to be younger to get oh, yeah. a little. Yeah, yeah. There's dazzle. always like like Batman. Flash had a, had a kid Flash. Well, I don't know if this yeah. was there was a kid Flash at this time back then. No, oh. but you know, Batman had Robin. Superman probably had yeah. a Superboy at some point. That's that, weird. I don't know when Superboy showed up. I'd have to look at that. Well, you're but, taking uh, the movie Captain America, so we're now. This is Captain 1941. Yeah, comic books are, are geared towards kids, so oh, yeah. you can always put in a, like a kid partner. So they to can help be them. in his shoes, like I'm Bucky, whatever. But yep. yeah, exactly. So I could be a hero too. So this whole bit about in this movie about Bucky being his buddy is all new, like his uh, his age and his same age type of thing. Right. I mean, they were they were really good friends. They were very close yeah. partners, and they all watched each other's back and stuff. But the fact, the idea of them being like peers, mm-hmm. is is kind of a new thing. I remember reading but, the old comics and thinking, I, it, the way they talk to each other, I was like, it's a it's a kind of like might be a romantic thing between Cap and Bucky. Like, no, I don't ever. I never got that. Like I they, I mean, they're like, I love you, Bucky. Like, <laughs> oh, Bucky. I mean, they like, I can't live without I mean, you, it, Bucky. Like that kind of thing. Like, <laughs> you know, like. Are you saying what, what? men cannot express their fondness for each other? They usually. I'm saying they usually don't. I mean, I I do that to Donnie <laughs> all the time. Uh, I know my best friend. Your best somebody. friend. I'll yeah. I'll have to wrestle you for Donnie because Donnie's my boy. Uh I'll win, Joe. I mean, it was kind of a like a I guess sort of a reverse of their comic book situation in a way because you know Steve Rogers was the frail weakling and Bucky's the guy who's always protecting him and and, mm-hmm. and yeah. uh, uh, keeping him out of trouble, I guess, and sort of being I mean they're best friends, but and you know like Steve Rogers is smart like like hmm. he's not quite a mentor I wouldn't say Bucky was, but he was someone to. I guess it's like a big, to be. like a big brother. It's like, like a big, a, brother. like a big brother. Yeah, exactly yeah. like that. So, so that's all than, new. That's all new for the movie. Like that wasn't the way. It wasn't like that kind of. Like they didn't not, make yeah, Steve really. Rogers like a weakling. Like no, you know what I mean. Like they did in the movie, which is cool. It's cool that no, they Steve did. Rogers was initially like a frail weakling. Oh, he, he was the super soldier thing. That's real in the ca- but in the the, comic. the the version of Bucky in this is yeah. different. Gotcha. Than he started in the comics. And then uh, in the uh, the comic books, eventually, um, they killed off Bucky for mm-hmm. a long time. There was like in like the big. F- uh, I'm trying to. I can't remember exactly when that. I'll have to look it up when they did this story. But like, you know, Captain America was big during the war, and then he kind of got uh, he fell out of 
favor for a while after the war ended. There wasn't as much need for a rah-rah American yeah. hero type, so he, he kind of <clears throat> faded from comics for a little while. I think he came back for a little while in the 50s and then didn't get revived until uh, like 1960. Uh, whenever the Avengers started, I think it was 63-ish or something, somewhere around the mid-60s, they brought Captain America back into the Avengers, and that's when, like, a lot of the story... Then that was after, you know, the Fantastic Four started and Marvel, the new superhero explosion, started the Silver Age. And then yeah. uh, all these, like, a lot more stories were told about Captain America's so this, story. I know you've said this before, the Silver Age is the 60s, the mid-60s, mid to late 60s? Uh, yeah, until, uh, wow. I want to say somewhere, uh, probably close to the eighties. And then like, that becomes like the modern age, I believe. And, uh, I don't know if there's age names after that, but like, I was going to say, are we age, in an age? Is, is there a golden age? Are we, what age are we in now? Are we in an uh, age? I'd have to look what the nerds are saying, but you know, the golden age is, you know, the beginning of this Captain America created in the golden age, Superman, Batman, 30s and 40s. That's the golden age. Of oh, comics. that's the golden age. Silver came yeah. after golden. Yeah, gold, silver, and then uh, I would. I don't think they ever said bronze age, but because <laughs> that's a thing. But then they also started giving themselves. You know, you have like the heroic age. You know. Yeah, I think yeah. They kind of started heroes reborn again. Yeah, and... The heroic age, which is meaningless, I think. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, the the story of Bucky was uh, like. Eventually, like they fought in World War II together all the time, and then close to the war's end, they were finally closing in on one of their biggest nemeses, Baron Heinrich Zemo, who uh, Baron Zemo, uh, yeah, Baron Zemo, who uh, we we meet someone by the name of Zemo in Civil War, and he's going to be in the Falcon and Winter Soldier, yep. but we'll yep. get into that a bit later. They're uh, is chasing the, down is Zemo. That the, is that the MMA fighter guy? No, no. There's an MMA fighter guy. That's... Back, what is it, Batrock? You're thinking yeah. of Batrock, the Leaper in Captain America: Winter Soldier. He, yeah. Sorry. He's okay. in Falcon and the Winter Soldier too, I think. Yeah, I just saw I the announcement. He's, he's coming a... back somewhere yeah. to something. Oh, really? I didn't know who that? I is. hadn't heard that. Yeah. That'd be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Batrock, the freaking Leaper, it's such a like a French caricature of a guy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, Batrock the Leaper! So they, they kind of make him a hard ass in that, but he's still wearing the Batrock the Leaper color. He was, he was kind of a joke for a long time. Okay. Sorry uh, to sidetrack there. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, uh, so, like, they're chasing down uh, Cap, uh, Baron Zemo. Zemo launches this uh, rocket of some and there's sort. Actually, that's supposed- there's actually an animated version of this. Like the movie, they, have, they actually have an animated version of the movie where you see Bucky die. Oh, okay. Really? Uh, yeah, it's like the the rocket's going off. It's about to uh, blow stuff up. And this might be kind of what plays into the finale of this movie. That I'm thinking of this now. This is kind of similar. Yeah. Like there's this. The, I think Zemo's flying off in this rocket that's gonna uh, destroy a lot of stuff. Uh, Captain America and Bucky uh, like sabotage it. And then, uh, so it's not going to hurt anybody. And then Captain America, like, he says, jump, Bucky, jump. And Bucky can't, this Bucky's stuck or something. So he's stuck to the rocket as it explodes. Uh, and that's Captain America's big burden is that he wasn't able to save his uh, partner, Bucky. Yeah. And for the longest time, uh, that was like, you know, central uh, motivating tragedy for Steve Rogers. Mm-hmm. And one of the rules, like, you know how people die and come back all the time in comics. But one of the rules for, for years was only Bucky stays dead. Like, that's the only guy that stays <laughs> the only dead. One. I don't know yeah. why I'm Everybody laughing. Everybody else can be revived, but not Bucky. Only but B- then they Bucky. then they broke that rule in the 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 mid the aughts and then that's how the Winter Soldier came about. But we'll talk about that. So when, when they the when Soldier. they broke that rule were nerds like Bucky stays dead. Like were they yelling that? Like I think yeah, there was a there was a faction of nerds going, Oh, come on. Let somebody stay Joe, dead. You, Joe, you should know by now that there's always that small group of <laughs> nerd yeah. them. Yeah. That, they, they, they love continuity. Yeah. Like, if you break the norm, they go up in arms, you know? Yeah. Like, I think that's what it There's always me nerds about. angry about something. Yeah, that, that's that's right? what I like that's about nerd them. Or it, it's not what I like, but it's what amuses me. Like, it, it in a way, <laughs> it's terrible to say, but... 
their uh, their anger amuses me. <laughs> yeah. uh, so this is starring Chris Evans, Tommy Lee Jones, Hugo Weaving, Haley Atwell, and Sebastian Stan. Did I yep. say those names right? Correct. Um, and so, yeah, I didn't. I don't think I knew who all these folks were, but I have a lot of questions about Haley Atwell. But that folks as in we'll as the the characters that they played or the people. Oh no! Yeah, I didn't know. I knew Tommy Lee Jones, of course, and Chris oh, okay. Evans, I think. <laughs> but uh, like Hugo Weaving is the bad guy, right? Uh, Red Skull. Yeah, he's the, the Red Matrix. Skull from the Matrix. He's oh, also the bad guy in the Matrix. Oh yeah, Mr. that's <laughs> who he is. I like it. It's oh, he's coming that together. Guy. Boom! I knew he looked familiar. It was driving me nuts. Um, and Haley Atwell, I had never seen before. And then Sebastian Stan is going to be Bucky, but. I mean, I know she ends up being Agent Carter and everything, but yeah, she's just Before so striking, this, yeah. like strikingly mm-hmm. beautiful. So, literally, um, she punched that guy in the face. Yeah, and punched him, <laughs> and she's so good. I mean, we'll get into this, but she is so good. Um, yeah, she's really good. And she and Chris Evans, that whole, I mean, they're good act. I think that's what I love about Marvel. I keep talking about this is like they really have good actors, like. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, they invested mm-hmm. in the artist. They really did. And then seeing Tommy Lee Jones was a little uh, off-putting when I just got done rewatching the old Batman. So seeing, I was like, <laughs> Two Face. That's Two Face. What's he doing in here? No, no, uh, he's Tommy Lee Jones. And I love him in this movie. I don't know what it is. Just him being a crotchety old man the whole time. Yeah, right. Me yeah. too. He's great. I feel like he's perfected that role. He he's really me cry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was great. I mean, he's so funny. You brought a ninety pound ass man out of my bed. Just like listening to Tommy Lee Jones speechify about anything is yeah. entertaining to me. I don't uh, care. And, and I'm just to take you in. Yeah. Yeah. I sure hope. I don't care. I sure hope we never find out he did anything horrible as an actor because he yeah. he's been in I so mean, many. I've heard he's kind of like a hard to work with, but yeah, uh, I'm sure. I think that's more just being a curmudgeon. Well. Yeah. And then it but his his character is actually a comics character too. Oh, um, he is. Yeah, I mean he's, he's not a super well known guy, but he he was around yeah, like when they were started telling backstories of Captain America in the '60s. He was in there, so they used that. Um, I just read that today, and I was doing some research about Cap. Um, uh, Peggy Carter also created in the mid '60s uh, as a Captain America love interest. Which gets weird eventually because, uh, d- like in the sixties, uh, that wasn't that far removed from World War II. So, like she was pitched as the older sister of Sharon Carter, who uh, was introduced later as her niece uh, in the later Captain America movies, and mm. that's always kind of a weird thing because in the comics, uh, you know. Peggy's kind of a background character, like an old flame kind of thing, whereas right. uh, Sharon Carter is like his true magic. But, uh, oh. so then, which is why I like they had that moment in Civil War, I think it was, when they kind of kissed a little bit, sort of foreshadowing maybe that's what they would do. But it's still weird, like the love of his life, this is her niece that he's right. kind of with. A, but everything's weird if you're if you lose, you know, 70 years of your life. I don't know. What Everything are you is a weird. To do? Yeah. 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 Wait around. Like. <laughs> yeah. For reincarnation. Or, or go back in time, and <laughs> at the end of Endgame is when he actually did. Oh, but did he um, go back and see? Does he go back and see her, Peggy? Do you forget? I Endgame do. Or? I don't. I don't remember right. it. Yeah. <laughs> Spoiler alert for anyone who has not watched Endgame, who is patiently walking through this series with us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry. We, yeah, we'll have to keep that spoiler. Yeah, I don't. You know, I honestly don't remember. I need to see these movies like three or four times. And like I've said, this one I've seen a bunch of times, so I think I remember this mm-hmm. one better. Right. And I think I've uh, only and, uh, seen Chris, it a bunch of times because it was on a lot. You know. I don't know. And just to remind you, like Chris Evans was kind of an interesting casting at the time because, like, a it was we didn't know how they're going to pull off Captain America as a concept. Yeah, be right. who can embody this guy, what he's supposed to be to the Marvel Universe. Yeah. Which this, is this this symbol of, like, the Superman-style symbol of right. inspiration, oh, hope, and, yeah. and justice, and, and forthrightness. Yep. 
without uh, being and then cast, without being super cheesy, right? Like yeah, yeah. Like just everything he says is so cheesy. It's like cheesified. It's like a stuffed crust pizza. Yeah. Like you can't even <laughs> like no. But somehow he does it. I, somehow he does it. And I don't he know does. how. It's it's yeah. That's it's. it's that's what gets like he's supposed to be the guy who inspires everybody, and they yeah. do that throughout the the other movies. Everyone kind of goes, well, he's, he's kind of good at that. And like mm-hmm. Ant Man is super excited to be around him all the time. Well, if you think about it, as a kid, I know as a kid when he was the, the weakling, you know, all he wanted to do was to get out there and fight the Nazis. So he ha- he always had that that get up and go that fight in him. So now here he yeah. was, you know, he has a super serum in him. And, like, he has the opportunity to do something, and he's been held back. So it's easy for him to develop that, you know, boss mentality. You know, like, take yeah. charge, because, you know, I, I, I'm, that's who I am. Like, it's, it was, and, you said, and, and even though I'm not from there, you know, Captain America's from Brooklyn. People from Brooklyn, New Yorkers, you know, yeah. they, they say New Yorkers, they got that, you know, they just got something about them. Yeah. So, <laughs> there is that. Yeah, they, and, they and, take a little less crap. And and when he's little, like you're right, that's exactly when it, because he started out little, like a a big dog and a little body that's never going to give up, mm-hmm. and he he wins us over. Whereas mm-hmm. if he if he shows up as this big buff dude that gets you know probably every girl loves, like we generally we don't like those guys. Like those guys are d bags, right. you know, but. He be, because <laughs> he won us over as the little guy, and then he became mm-hmm. that. You know, so we are you already that, have us as the little guy. You know what I mean? Like, right. it's the that's why Chris Evans was such a weird choice because he had played the Human Torch yeah. in the mm-hmm. old Fantastic Four movies, who is a, a cocky, hot, good looking yeah, like douchebag, co- cocky hot right. shot. Yeah, yeah. So I feel yeah. like who so he's going to like, prize as. He's going to be the Human Torch again in something. He is? I forgot what movie. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna have him playing him in Tokyo. He can't. Tiffany's right. He can't. Why can't I'm he? surprised you said that, Josh. You like people to Josh play. Josh Brolin is Thanos and Cable. I guess. Yeah. No, that's I mean that's that's my thing, is like he's already he can only be that if they're the same we secretly find okay. out the same identity. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh Joe Bird. S- yeah, my Speaking verse. of a human Joe torch, verse. just a just as an this is an Easter egg in this movie. A Easter egg or uh, Easter chicken? It's I think it's an Easter egg. I know what was because it? Because there again? there uh was if like something in an early movie pays off in a later movie, oh, that's an okay. Easter chicken. That's I guess. Easter chicken, right. Okay. Yes. Or an Easter egg is just something they haven't paid off. It could become an Easter chicken at any moment. Okay. If they mm-hmm. decide to put it into a movie. No guarantee to hatch. Yes. Right. But, okay, uh, boom, first, I like that. No guarantee yeah. to hatch. She's always coming through the, with the catchphrases. <laughs> the, the first Marvel superhero was the Human Torch, except not the Fantastic Four one. He was like an android named Jim Hammond. Like this weird... The, it was a... Uh, yeah. And God, in the f- Marvel this. Comics number one. <laughs> you know, some of these things you don't necessarily have to remember. You know? So yeah. It's just fun fact. This is not going to be on the test? Right, yeah. This is no. just, you know... I don't uh, guarantee but, you what's on the test. Backstory. <laughs> okay, so this, this sorry, this other human torch this was extra Jim credit. Hammond. He's not the same one. Yeah, it was. It was basically it was an android human torch that was kind of the first. Mar- it was in Marvel Comics number one. He was on the cover. This dude on fire. Um, huh. and, but when it was, it wasn't even Marvel Comics yet. It was still Timely Comics, but it was it predates Captain America. Uh, that's the first thing, and. Uh, we see that android human torch when they go in that scene where they go to the World's Fair or the the big fair, uh, and they're looking around at all the the Stark Expo stuff. Really? There's the the android human torch is in like an exhibit on display, just uh, that you casually see when they first come in there. That is an and Easter egg. Watch yeah. that. and oddly enough, that android in the comic books eventually is the basis that eventually becomes the Vision. Ah, whoa, yeah. yeah. Whoa! Yes. Tied Whoa. all together, Professor. <clears throat> yeah, my mind just blew. But anyway, that's my that's, mind blown. I always wanted to get that Easter egg out there. That's a good Easter Before egg. I, I mean, Art's usually mm-hmm. the Easter egg guy, so that. But that was like I think a... Andy. <laughs> Andy pulls up. Andy brings a lot of Easter eggs. We're yeah. like mm-hmm. we're like we're like bunny, we're like Easter bunnies. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, see, I, I speculate a lot on the Easter chickens. <laughs> <laughs> that's the Easter egg brothers. Uh, <laughs> 
new CD mixtape coming soon. With the Easter Egg Brothers. <laughs> yeah, that's all. <laughs> Your Easter wow, buddies. Wow, definitely tip. You guys yeah. are Easter buddies. Yeah. Uh, right. Okay, so the movies. Can we get to the start of the movie now? Yep. Sure. Yeah, yeah. We just, a, I think we, we were starting the movie. I mean, we were, like, he just gave you the world of tomorrow... Um, expo thing, you know, we was, we was yeah, that. I mean, no, he just gave a, a ton of history that I know. I really, <laughs> I will say, I learned a, a shit ton right now, like mm-hmm. a lot of stuff. That I didn't I, even I, talk about the original Red Skull yet. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> well, we'll get into that, we'll but you'll bring that when we get to All Red right. Skull just because that fascinates me, and I got some opinions about that, and I have some. Uh, pent up memories, I think, of Red Skull that are going to come out too, <laughs> which I think like uh, when I was a kid. So, uh, okay. Uh, so it opens up in the snowy scene and that whole thing about you guys, you're the guys from D.C. And we're going to have to get one hell of a crane to get this crap, you know. And we see that big cr- uh, crashed thing. Mm-hmm. And, of course, this last time I watched it, I still didn't remember what it was. I was like, I forget what that is. Is that an airplane? What is that thing supposed to be? And when they jump in, you know, they cut open them jumping inside and finding Cap and everything and. I was like, that thing's huge. I was like, what is that big that they could fly? I don't remember them flying something that big. Of course, once I got to the end of the movie, I was like, oh, yeah, that's pretty big. <laughs> that's, pretty, uh, that's pretty big. A big, giant plane. Um, mm-hmm. So they're walking around this giant base ship or plane thing, and they find the cap shield. It's 3 in the morning. Uh, and so we see this little, because we all know what it is, right? It's the shield that we yeah. see, right, frozen in the mm-hmm. ice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um and then we cut to Norway, March. And, and I think that whole scene, that whole beginning scene, I still have the same excitement as the first time because I, cause I know that story. And this was one of the ones I know I talked about in an earlier episode of Iron Man where I went, I tried to l- be a nerd back in the 90s and I I decided I was going to buy all the, the – what is it? Masterwork. What is it? The, the, the Masterwork. The, the book anthologies, was, the, uh, uh, the masterworks, the like uh, ultimate uh, guy, omnibus, or, huh? It was the, co- the Marvel omnibus, essential, essential, they, the essential series or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I bought Iron Man and I think about Captain America. I think those are the only two, and those Captain America ones are the ones where I thought, boy, there's something going on with Bucky and Captain. Like they're like, I can't live without <laughs> you. I need you, Bucky, and things like that. I was like, oh, maybe that's <laughs> you know, maybe it's ahead of its time, whatever. But so those are like the only two that I really, besides Wolverine, which I have the first couple of those, but it's like those are the origin stories I knew so well. And I, I remember go, watching it being doubtful, like there's no way they can do this. And that excitement when I saw that shield, I remember mm-hmm. seeing it in 2011 being like, oh, my God, it's so exciting. Like just getting like goosebumps kind of thing. It's so well mm-hmm. done. I don't know. So just putting that that's there, like, it's so well done. You know, it's so That's good. the feeling of being a nerd and wanting to see the thing you like as a nerd yeah. mm-hmm. become a thing that everyone else can see why that you like it. Why you like it so much. And then hoping, and, and then there's that hope and that trepidation, that nervousness, like, please don't mess this up. Like, please don't screw up my, mm-hmm. my whole childhood exactly. thing. And so, yeah, like. We're a little more confident that they know what they're doing these days, but back yeah. then. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a lot of the times before that, there was always like, okay, don't suck. Yeah. As like, yeah. like video don't game suck. fans, I imagine, <laughs> go still go into every movie that's adapted from a video game going, all right, don't suck. And then inevitably, it usually kind of sucks. Totally bad. Yeah. Is that right? The, most of the video games that are adapted from movies suck? Is that a thing? Most movies adapted from video games suck. Oh, movies adapted from A lot of times they make movies out of video games that they have no business making just because they want to throw like <laughs> some big name in it like like Dune with the rock like you know that was yeah. something that shouldn't have been made i don't think i watched that yeah, I don't yeah know. but what is doom other than just shooting monsters right yeah <laughs> like they got room to but work but they, they with did it kind of a la video game style they have like you know when they go to shoot they do like they cut to like first person so it gives it that whole like oh you're playing Dune, but you're mm-hmm. watching it kind of thing yeah I gotta That's say, I think I mean not that I had as much nervousness as you guys as nerds, but I feel like the WandaVision has like completely gotten rid of any doubt I have anymore about Marvel, like where they're going right now in Disney and MCU. Like, I mean, I'm surprised that's the thing that let you lose your doubt when they've been making quality movies for a minute now. I mean, they have <laughs> been, but I, but I think 
Although I didn't have this. I didn't have this podcast for you guys to, to for me to know that it's that good. You know what I mean? Like sometimes you don't uh-huh. know if it's that good until everybody says, hey, by the way, this is freaking good. And if you don't <laughs> understand some of it, like like when the whole – that's kind of why I want to start this. Like the whole – what is the one where, uh, you know, Thanos – Shot everybody into whatever with the rings on. Like I don't, War. I don't know that I really had any idea what the hell's going on. Like, I, and again, <laughs> I only as I've talked with this, I've half watched all these, like just liking explosions, but not understanding. Uh-huh. As I'm going through these movies, and this is a credit to you guys, like I'm getting so much more enjoyment out of them. Like I'm understanding mm-hmm. them, and I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm geeking out about. Like I'm become, like I'm turning it over. But it's like there's something. (laughs) Thank you, three. No, but there's something to there's something to that. So it's like so maybe it is that I'm watching Wandavision with you guys helping me watch it. (laughs) That I'm Mm -hmm. like, this is amazing what they're doing, and and I mean maybe the same reaction was for Infinity War and all that, but they were amazing. I mean they looked amazing, Uh but Mm -hmm. again I only know about half of what's happening probably. (laughs) Like if that. Now when you go back and watch. Excuse me. When you go back and watch them now, your mind shall be blown. Well, I will be. We'll and better understand. And as I'm watching them, you got you know, I get to talk with you guys about them. Like, okay, what did mm-hmm. what did I see? And and I and it's like I'm already understanding them more than I did before. Right. So it's a, it's an exciting thing for me that you guys are giving me. So thank you for that, You're friends, right. nerd friends. Yeah, That's I mean, it really for. is. It really is. I gotta say, like you guys are really convincing me. And hopefully, there's some I mean, other like, even now, like. Let's say when you start watching, you know, other movies, you know, because you're going to go into it now, not like, okay, I'm going to see some explosions, I'll probably <laughs> see this, I'm going to probably see that. But now it's like you're going you're gonna to be looking at that explosion, but you're going to be like, hmm, I wonder if that's a thing. Is that going to be a thing? Is that a thing from that? You so know? maybe you're well, ruining I remember movies that thing from me. that thing. Maybe I could have got enjoyment, and now you guys are going to make me more critical. Or, but I do feel like, like I said with Lightning, uh, Black Lightning, like it's made me realize that's not a very well written show. Like, so it's, I'm a little more critical <laughs> now. Whereas normally I would have been like, oh, this is cool, a bunch of the guys I shooting gotta, lightning everywhere. And I, st- I watched Superman and Lois. Oh, did you watch and that again, it's a CW show. I'm watching this show, and I said, like halfway through it, I was like. And I was talking to um, Josh at work about this yesterday. Like halfway through it, Special I was guest like, Josh. oh my goodness. They turned Superman and Lois into One Tree Hill. I'm like, <laughs> how did you do this? They yeah. made the show into one. How they but the but then I also called back to the last time we were talking about like the whole Black Lightning thing. I was like, well, because I'm a nerd. I can't not watch it. It's like I have to watch it, but then I'm still like I'm watching Superman and One Tree Hill. And I'm yeah, like, oh. it is. It's well, like, I haven't it's watched that like, yet. It's like it's, it's it's like if you watch it, even if you don't know what channel you're watching it, it's like oh, this is a CW show. Like what is this like the '90s? <laughs> like what am I watching? Yeah. Party of Five. Where's yeah, Scott a- Wolf? <laughs> <laughs> Where's Scott Wolf? Yeah, that's right. It's like Party of Five. That's exactly what it is. That's what I felt like I was watching. I was like, get to the blowing up stuff. He went away. It was exactly like Party of Five. 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 Where we all remember where Joe was. And you know it's cool because, you know, Joe's going to keep this in there, right? You know he's going to keep it in there. Like, I listen to it sometimes like, wow. Like, we have like this witty band. They're like, yeah, we're going to cut this. And like this is a podcast playback. Like yeah, we'll probably cut this out. But yeah, it's still there. I like oh, I don't know. <laughs> all you all he's got to say is we got to cut this out, and then that sort of uh, excuses everything we just said that should be cut out. <laughs> <laughs> That's the excuse. Mm, we should cut. All right, this. Mm. you were just saying. Uh, I already party forgot. Five, it's like, like, it's like it's like it's party at five. I, yeah. I just was saying when I got kicked off this time, I was saying how Black Lightning is. My daughter likes the girl in that show, like the main girl mm-hmm. or the younger daughter, because she's from some other show she watches. So maybe I'll just Disney watch that Channel. with yeah, yeah Disney funny. Channel or something. So maybe I'll just watch that with her, and then and then let her like the she'll like the whatever mm-hmm. romance is probably going to happen in it. And oh, then yeah, that's, that's that's definitely romance. But it is funny because her romance is actually like this is Black Lightning's last season, but her mm-hmm. romance is actually getting a spinoff. Because of the show, which is oh, weird. Oh, really? And then they're also going to 
supposed her and her sister going to show up on the spinoff. I like that. I like but the as, actor who plays Black Lightning. I like that guy. I've never seen him before, and I like Chris him. Williams. Yeah. So if yeah, not, he I can just. Does a good yeah. job. It's just he can only do so much. Mm-hmm. I watched season one, uh, but it's like you can only do so much with writers. Again, it shows yeah. you the the benefit of having strong writers, and yeah. mm-hmm. but people are watching it. Because again, other people aren't critiquing it. That, that and also money, because like a lot of their a lot of their effects, you know, aren't the best effects. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like especially when he uses his lightning powers, it's it's it, it's not twenty 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 one ish or whatever. Yeah. It's it's. I mean, like even I I feel Damn. like electro um, electric powers are a lot better than his. And you know, Black Lightning is supposedly in the DC one of the more powerful, you know, heroes in the DC universe. So right. I don't know. Some of their That's power it. sets and it's it just. But then you also, like I said, it's also because it's television. So it's, the budget is and it's big for them to like really, right. you know, delve into showing electricity CW's come out of his fingers not and not like look Disney. like it's water falling upward kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, did, so uh, I didn't see Superman and Lois yet, but uh, I did see the opening sequence, and they did uh, a real deep cut nerd callback uh, by like the first time you see Superman, like he's telling this story about how he started, and the the outfit he's wearing. Mm-hmm. Well, number awesome. one, he's he's saving this big green car from certain destruction, which is the cover of Action Comics number one, mm-hmm. his first appearance. And then, like, the outfit he's wearing calls back to the, the, the 1940s Max Fleischer cartoons that are, like, so stunningly gorgeous today. Mm-hmm. And, like, like the animation in that era, it, it's, it still looks amazing. It looks like the 40s, but it also looks amazing. And he's wearing the particular Superman version with, like, the, the S with the, the black mm-hmm. background on it. That I was like, wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. It's not necessarily... It's, I mean, I guess the cut kind of sort of be spoilerish. The one good thing I can say about this show, that show is that it still it didn't leave the universe. So like basically when if you when you do finally watch it, Andy, like you, mm-hmm. I don't know how, if you watch any of the crossover events or whatever. I, I watched. Uh, I don't think I watched all of the Crisis and Infinite Earths mm-hmm. episodes, but I watched a few of them. But but so basically like the stuff that goes on, it's, it gives you that whole like. And this is again like like I, it's something about the multiverse in both of these universes, which is awesome. But this show, even though like I said, it's like One Tree Hill, like the people in it, like you know, that it's all one main reality now. So right, this right. show is going to have and have things where it's going to, and this is years past what happened. So it's going to have like the the outcome of what happened when universes collide, kind of when reality collide kind of thing which is also oh, this... i think was going to end up happening after you know even though we're talking about cat but what happens in one division it's going to eventually lead up to what happens when universes collide when, when realities collide you know because you have like the main like you know like cap is in the 616 whatever but then anywho let's let's let's, let's go well, back to cap. Well, speaking of collisions uh yeah. we we cut to norway uh, March 1942, <laughs> and a Hydra car ornament busts into the hidden tomb where the Tesseract decoy is, mm-hmm. uh, and that busts right through a big collision. And uh, we get a, the snake box in the wall and the blue light similar to the Pulp Fiction briefcase effect where it opens up and shines on their face kind of thing. Um, and then he says, "You, I, I have you fool. You cannot control the power. You'll burn. I already have. Hydra guy shoots the old man. Blood spatters onto his Hydra skull pin, foreshadowing the red skull. And I thought that was a neat little bit. You remember that mm-hmm. little bit? Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. did, did you know? Did, did you know that when you saw that? This time, uh, okay. <laughs> probably not the first couple <laughs> times, but right now, this time it was very obvious. I was like, oh, that's mm-hmm. red skull. Obviously, how cool is that? Now I know. Most, that? Yeah, most non nerds so would know that. But see, you're going to start picking up on things like that the more and more you get into yeah. absorbing all of this nerdiness that we're oozing into. Well, well that's, a, that's right. Yeah, and the more you guys talk about Easter eggs and Easter chickens and all that, I think 
I do kind of now. I watch for everything. Like everything they do is like, is that a thing? Is that a thing? But what was that? You know. I would I would say this though, when you're watching on your first go around, try not to sit there like, really enjoy it. Yeah. And then as a nerd, you like you really enjoy it, and you might notice something, and then you go back and you keep watching it. But on your first time, you don't want to sit there and just like try to like, be try it. to like, well, yeah, like, this yeah. what happened. Yeah, that's the difficulty I'm having now, especially like if I'm taking notes to do the podcast. Like, mm-hmm. I got to pause it every couple of minutes to like write down what I remember, what I saw. And like my son was like, I hate watching movies where you pause it every t- five minutes. I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> and sometimes I do that anyway, just because I'm like, mm-hmm. I want to like pause it, especially Marvel stuff. Like, I want to think about it. Like, wait, what's happening? Like, and then, or my mind will wander, or I'll do something, you know, I'll mm-hmm. trying to work while I'm doing it. I'm like, shit, I don't even know what's happening. I don't know why he's mad. I gotta <laughs> rewind it, you know. Um, but maybe it's my attention span, or whatever else I have, but um, yeah, so, but, and, and that's the thing, too. It's not that enjoyable to watch this for the podcast, because I'm trying to, like, Write down it's like what a school the, assignment. It's yeah, like an assignment, so it's like now I want to go back and watch it just for the fun of it again. I but think like, I like art yeah. suggestion to you: watch it one time through, just to watch it one time through. Yeah, and let your son live in peace, and then go back <laughs> and watch it with your notes. Yeah, that might be it, or just use yeah you know, an internet timeline and make it my own words or something. You know, like right. Um, <laughs> Because sometimes when you read those from other people, you're like, oh, I missed that. I don't want to go back and see it. But, uh, yeah. yeah, it is hard because you do want to enjoy it. Like, it is it's enjoyable. So, yeah, I think I'll probably do that, TBJ. Because I could have watched this three times because we've tried to record this podcast like three times. Right. And we moved back and <laughs> back and back. Time. I could have watched mm-hmm. it three more times. Uh, then we see Tiny Steve Rogers with the 4F thing. Uh, and... He doesn't. He's trying to get in, but he's got that list of ailments, uh, and he gets beat up in the alley. Uh, somewhere I copied. I took a picture of his ailments that he gets, like all the things wrong with him. Like I took a picture of it just to like go through all of it and say, "Oh, what's wrong with him?" <laughs> I don't remember where I put that, but um, then he gets beat up, and he's got the garbage can shield because uh, he's what you know. And that was when he's at the movie. He tells the guy to shut up, right? Uh, yeah. And then Bucky yeah. Bucky saves him, and we see Sergeant James Barn, the Barnes the one hundred seventh. And this is where I was going to ask you: Is that from the com- Like, is he a sergeant in the comics, and he's like his older buddy? But now we know all that's not from the comics. This is all new wow. for the movie. So you already covered They're that. They're like, mm-hmm. huh? Yeah. And then we get the World's Fair with Howard life partners. Howard Stark. And this is where I was going to ask with the Howard Stark thing at the World's Fair. I think we touched on this maybe, but I wanted to check. Like, wasn't there? Didn't we figure out the age? There's an age issue. Like Howard would have been older or younger, or it really doesn't add up right. Uh, well, remember. it depends on I guess how old we think uh, Tony is. Tony Stark is when we meet him as an adult. Uh, he's obviously very young, Howard Stark here. Yeah, uh, and but he has. He has died before we uh, meet Tony Stark. Actually, like he dies when Tony Stark is a teenager, or like in his early twenties, or something like that, which mm-hmm. we learn, uh, which we see in uh, when soldier. Civil War, I guess, when he's uh, right. <laughs> when he's doing that uh, uh, holographic projection back into his childhood, yeah. and and as we find out later, uh, creating Mysterio. <laughs> By calling that technology barf, and uh, <laughs> Beck gets mad about that, but that's later. Um, and you, this is the second time you've mentioned it on the Nerd School podcast uh, because uh, I use that as an editing point on one of the things. Like, oh yeah, he said the barf thing. That's here, and that's where I'll start the next. <laughs> barf. I just like saying barf. It's and I word. don't know, and I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Which I'm sure I saw that, or I barely know. I remember Mysterio a little bit, but. Again, we'll get, I'll understand that we'll get now. That. Yeah, a lot when we, we got we got like another nineteen movies to go. <laughs> right, right. right. Yeah, yeah, we'll get there in twenty twenty seven. Don't yeah. think about what you don't know yet. Yes, we got time. We yes. got so much to go. 
Yeah, we're still world building here with this one. Yeah. Um, uh, since we just passed the Red Skull thing, I will mention, I just learned today, because I actually went back, uh, you can find Captain America Comics number one in PDF form and read it for free. Nice. Uh, Red Skull also appeared in that uh, in the first book. one. It's like several stories. Yeah. But it wasn't this, it wasn't uh, Johann Schmidt, who is this guy, Hugo Weaving's playing. Oh. Uh, the original Red Skull uh, was just, uh, was a schmuck in a mask who uh, was pretending to have a death stare. Like, ah, look into the face of death. Yeah. But he was also secretly, like, injecting poison into them as they died. Uh, oh. But he was trying to create fear. Ah. And then he got busted at the end. Like, it turned out to be just a mask, and he was just some schmuck they'd introduced earlier in the story. But And he was wearing, like, a, like a purple jumpsuit with a giant swastika, uh, like... In the oh, comic, yeah. I wonder if in that the original a, comics, he had a swastika. In the, wow. in, yeah, in the original comics, he was you know full on. Not, but then later, and then I believe in Captain America comics number seven is when the real like the new Red Skull comes in, and they they say or that first guy was just his minion. He's got uh, minions everywhere, and this guy is, is the bigger deal. Yeah, and that's the guy that got built into what he currently is. Yeah, Rohan I think Schmidt. I think that that description sounds more like almost like more of a believable thing that a red skull would be is a mask because it's hard to believe a guy with no you know with a skull face is surviving like it's hard to believe like when I see him tear off his mask I'm like does it, it looks like he's got ears there like what's over like his ears are clearly covered like it's not the, yeah I mean uh, he, like in this it makes more sense because like it's not actually a skull. Mm-hmm. It's just his head is misshapen and sort of burnt and damaged. Yeah. Right, but it okay. looks red and it has some like protruding cheekbones, so it looks skull enough to give him that nickname. Yeah. Uh, so so it's not actually like his head is an actual skull. And and in this movie, he's like this because it's the it's supposed to be the super serum went wrong on him or they were testing yeah. it and it was a side effect of whatever. Uh, yeah, serum, I mean, it, was, it, right? yeah, it was still in development, and also because uh, at one point Dr. Erskine says it mm-hmm. takes what's inside you and magnifies it, it and brings it out. Yeah, and right. shitty death man, and you're an asshole person, <laughs> and it brought it out what of he you. Was. Which right. which kind of explains why Cap is so great because he's a good kid in that little tiny baby mm-hmm. body, and he's mm-hmm. a super you know he's a super hearted guy that wants to help. You know, defeat evil. He wants to do right by everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then and so that mm-hmm. amplifies that goodness out of this little little fella. This little yeah, he it's would not be like a true hero. Right. It's like, do you want to kill Nazis? It's like, yeah. No, I just don't like bullies. I don't care where right. they're from. Yeah. That's the thing. Like, and that's like one of the test questions. Is like, are you there? To, are you are you out to go murder people? Mm-hmm. No, I just don't like bullies. Yeah. I don't care where they're from. Well, that is, it's just like understated. Like so much about this movie is is kind of the opposite of a lot of Marvel movies where everything is huge, yeah. Uh, like and and out there. Like I, that's part of the reason I like the whole Steve Rogers Peggy Carter relationship is that it's so buttoned down. Yeah, it's it's there. It's it's all mostly unspoken, mm-hmm. but uh, and it's and it's not obnoxious. And all they do is is. Uh, the closest they get is kissing at the end, and that's the whole thing. But it's just still an intense focal Rotation point and of everything. A lot of energy between them, but it's yeah Connection. chemistry. Yeah, Connection. but it's not obnoxiously done. It's just it's very right low key. And, yeah, which I mean they they I you this. know they do have a chemistry and they're good at it. But I I did find myself questioning like. Are you that in love? Like you just met. Like you're not that in love yet. But well, I think she's attracted. She she sees what the doctor sees in him. Yeah. She can see his character, and there is a such thing as loving people for their character. <laughs> and so, and she's along from the journey. Like she's watching him change, and you know, take on yeah. tasks and do mm-hmm. things that people said he wasn't going to do and why are you here and she knows why he's there and so mm-hmm. I think there. listen there are people you want to take it back to that time and that era yeah. uh, please remember there are people who met went on a date got married and he shipped off tomorrow that's true like, that's true they did those that those are real yeah, stories a lot of back time. in that time yeah. and there is a whole montage later uh, like who, we don't really know how long that montage takes place where they're, they're fighting they're chasing yeah. all the hydra bases they're doing mm-hmm. all the stuff all right. that's, that's a that's, lot of 
there's a flexible time in yeah. there. That That's could... a good point. All right, you it got that. It was not like two days, Joe. It wasn't like, oh my god, forty eight hours later, the yeah. love of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's what and I then, like, And so we touched and then, him. Oh, like, yeah, oh. I wanted to mention, like, during his big transformation scene when he comes out super yeah. buff. Yeah. Uh, there's her response to that is like she's can't believe what she's looking at, and she, like she even does a little touch thing. Yeah. Like she touches his chest real quick. Apparently, that was just Haley Atwell being sort of stunned by Chris Evans. Improvised. In general. Oh, really? <laughs> and like, like, I mean, I that was it. like her little surprise to <laughs> seen this before. I get it. She touched that for a minute and it's like, okay. And that's the take they used is the one where she was like, I, I need to touch that. That was yeah. like, she, that was, that was famous. a cool, that was a neat moment. That was like same. a cute, like, yeah. Um, and then real quick, I just cover on this one thing. Cause I have a question about, Erskine, 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 mm-hmm. Doctor Erskine, Abe Erskine, mm-hmm. Erskine. Uh-huh. So Abraham St- Erskine. Abraham Erskine. So Steve tries the recruitment again, and Doctor Erskine like overhears the whole thing. The German doctor that says says we need a little guy, and he gives him uh, one A, and it doesn't explain how, and he says he's giving him a chance. My question is: Is he is that a thing? From, is he a thing from the comics? Is he like? Is there a Doctor Erskine he's- that recognizes him and? pulls him aside or whatever and is he german uh, you know he uh he is a character from the comics i believe uh although in captain america comics number one he is referred to as uh uh gee, where is it uh professor reinstein oh, okay. uh, so but they changed it in 1965 when they started telling more captain america uh backstory in the, in the more modern era and explained that that was an alias he used to escape nazi germany oh uh, okay. So, he, like, he was a German scientist who had escaped and did not, le- uh, you know, was not a Nazi supporter. So he was helping the Allies. And so, like I guess my, uh, I, I can't say for sure that the whole uh, search for a good man thing was uh, uh, in comics. I, I'm not sure about that. But but, uh, but the yeah, whole was, the whole idea of him being a German because I think the first thing that struck me was like. I wonder why this guy's German, and in this era, why would you trust this German guy when we're fighting Germany? But that's got to be so that Red Skull can exist with the same super serum. Like, yeah, because I don't think that was uh, the original. Like, the Red Skull didn't have the super soldier serum for all. He was just some dude. Oh, uh, right. I okay. Think, who was who was generally wearing a mask? I think, or maybe had some kind of accident that turned his face into that. I think later was the introduction of him being an, an evil super soldier. Gotcha. They, they decided to make him be able to fight Captain America one on one. Okay. Well, this is like a lot for me to absorb right now. I know we're only sort of the beginning part of the movie, but we're we're in a you know we got some good audio here. It's been a while, so let's let's table it here. If you guys, if you nerds are good with it, and we'll come back and continue Captain America in the next episode of Nerd School. Stay tuned uh, for the next but the episode. The bell is ringing. I hear the bell ringing right now. Uh, class dismissed. Oh, wait, you got to say that. Because... <laughs> I'm hot for teachers. I don't, I don't feel tardy. <laughs> I don't feel tardy. Yeah. We'll just end with I don't feel tardy. I'm hot for art star. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still gonna say no, thank you. No, thank right. you. I mean, we gotta find no. something that you'll say, TBJ. Uh, I think I'll just I'll just be over here. What be about me. the What about the fact that the Mighty Art Star is back? Mm, mm, mm-mm. That was my favorite reaction mm-mm. when you, or well, one of the episode, the f- first Thor episode, I think it was. He was like, "The Mighty Art Star is back," and you were like, "Oh, now you're mighty!" <laughs> <laughs> like right away, just, like, <laughs> just gotta knock him down. <laughs> It's my job. Excelsior. Excelsior. Oh, my glasses are broken. My pocket is protected. Okay. about
stop the president no more But evidently they don't see we in the streets still poor Still more incarceration of my kids been by the prisons And people thinking this election to end it racism Proud of a pessimism, glad to see Obama But don't expect me not to speak out when I still see problems The Nerd School Podcast Nerd School is a member of the Queen City Podcast Network Powered by Ortho Carolina. Now offering video visits so you can take control of your orthopedic care from the comfort of your home. Schedule online at orthocarolina.com. Ortho Carolina, you improved.